Any of the views expressed in this show do not represent the views or opinions of those participating. We are merely observers. Please do not reenact any of the stories you hear on our show. Being featured on our show is not something to be proud of. And as always, please drink responsibly. You already see Tim, so you know what you got coming ahead of you. I was hard as a rock, and my wife tried to close it in a door. She said, here, stand right here. And she went to swing the door closed, and I was like, oh, God, stop. And then, Boy, I better write that down. I better write that in my journal so my kids can read it when I'm dead. Thanks, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Laughs and Drafts. This is Jason Thomas, your resident fancy boy. This is Jared, your learning man. This is Tim, the old man. I'm Ethan, the world's shortest giant. The world's shortest <laughs> Truly a sight. Well, I, I do like this new uh, trend that we have of, of uh, you just kind of surprising me with your name. It, it, is, it is quite nice. Oh, yeah. Because uh, I'll be real honest with you, real straight, because we're friends. We can do that, right? We're close friends. <laughs> straight is questionable. We've, we've never been straight. I've never been straight, but I would say that we're close to each other. Correct? Yeah. Sure. You didn't even sound like it. sure, and that wasn't very convincing. Yeah, it wasn't was very it? convincing. <laughs> We're good friends. Anyways, I forgot what I was going to completely say, but you know what? Oh yeah, I hated the guy with the glasses. I did too. I didn't. That like was it. a terrible name. I didn't like it at all. I was really disappointed in you for the ability of of uh, what you came up Jason, with. I I'm not creative. Okay. You're not, and I'm I can not. clearly see that now. I'm, I'm an IT person, man. I just I'm not creative. I fix problems. <laughs> I think the I growing, fix other the growing people's dwarf, creative f ups. Growing dwarf. That's all I do. Is is uh, is. Yeah, there you go. It's kind of growing on me. Yeah, uh, I like that. shortest Just, tall person. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Ethan is quite tall. Anyways, for those who've never listened to our show before, we go over strange news stories and cover a few different beers and say what we do and do not like about them. Talk about the the history of the beer a little bit, if that information is available. So we'll go ahead and get to our first story of the night. This one is from WorldNewsDailyReport.com, dot com, which I'm starting to find a lot of these in here. Mm. You know, I I'm not going to say that we're the most reliable news source or that the stuff we cover is true but it's good stories <laughs> that's not the point <laughs> entertaining at the very least this headline reads couple having sex outdoors in bigfoot costumes get accidentally <laughs> shot by hunters <laughs> <laughs> ohio couples attempts to spice up their sex life with some kinky role play turned horribly wrong last night as they were both shot by hunters while having sex in the woods in sasquatch costumes mm. 43-year-old Chris Mumford and 41-year-old Janet Smith were wearing disguises and engaging in loud sex in a wooded area a few miles out of Woodsfield when they were spotted by local hunters. Jared Burns and his son... Oh, of course. And his son, <laughs> so your son got to see it. Burn that into your mind. ...were patrolling their property with rifles in hand, looking for signs of bears. I didn't know bears and hmm. apparently were that big of a problem out in that area. But... The bears that may have awakened early from their hibernation when he saw hairy creatures. It looked like a couple of gorillas mating like crazy. They were standing over six foot tall and kept growling and moaning. They really looked like wild creatures. That's what it was, no doubt, what it was like. Mr. Burns and his son were convinced they were facing a couple of Sasquatches. Folkloric creatures said to be hairy, upright, walking, ape like creatures that dwell in North American wilderness. I know there aren't any ape around here, but this is Bigfoot territory. We really thought this was our one chance to kill one and finally prove they exist. The two men fired eight shots, hitting Mr. Mumford three times in the shoulder, the leg, and the abdomen, and hitting Miss Smith twice in the thigh and the forearm. Fortunately, the couple started screaming and swearing after getting shot. Helping the hunters realize their mistake. But that's an intelligent call 911. <laughs> that's intelligent Sasquatch. How much money we gonna get for this? <laughs> <laughs> the adventurous couple was transported to Barnesville Hospital, where doctors were able to stabilize their condition and no longer fear for their lives. Well, it's funny because a lot of the Bigfoot sightings in North America actually do come from Ohio. Really, a yeah. lot of them. Yeah. A lot of them. I, 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 I was thinking more bears. It, <laughs> Because well, they were they were walking rifle in hand looking for bears that had awakened early from hibernation. So, yeah. if, but then they uh, but there actually is a, a ton. Um, the most in the states is California, of course, 
Oh. Wayne County Forestry is uh, a hot spot. We were we were, we're gonna go hunt. We were gonna hunt hunting Where's there. Is that at Tim? In uh, Wayne County, Wayne County Forestry in in Ohio. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We uh, actually were planning a weekend trip. Yeah, well, let's to go, go out hunting. in the woods and be like, somebody beat us to it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and like seriously, that, Sax, I don't know what sounds Sasquatch makes, but I'm sure it's something similar to that. Well, well we know how. But what is it? We sure do. <laughs> We're waiting on the. Well, other one. I, I'm waiting. Uh, you're not going to do it. No. Oh, I was okay. Well, fine then. I guess we'll never know what Sasquatch sound like. So I guess we'll have to turn just, to another news source just, just because look it, look it up. What is it? Is it just like? Ah! Yeah, yeah. It's uh, nailed it. How would you say? It? Oh, it, it, well, it, I was, it goes really. It's a. It's, it's a it very goes high, a little something. It a, it's a very like high pitched. It's <laughs> a very pitched. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's that's, that's a good like. impersonation. That's what I needed to hear. It's that's a, all they wanted to hear. We can. How was like. how was that established? You know what I mean? Like this is what Sasquatch sounds like. Well, they recorded the two sounds. people having sex in the woods. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. <laughs> 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 they recorded they recorded the sound and apparently the frequency of the sound was like no human being can make the sound. Right. So they were like, I guess. I feel like I have heard except heard Uncle Bob's <laughs> recordings previous you know, I feel like we all looked them up at one point. Oh, I'm episode. sure yeah. separately. Um, what does whereas Sasquatch Sex sound Sex like. <laughs> Enter Sex Squatch Google Images. <laughs> Sex squatch. I wonder if it kind of looked like the, uh, you know, that scene in Super Troopers where he's banging that bear, but it's just oh, like yeah. a costume that he's attached to. I mean, I'm sure that's kind of what it was like. I mean, they, it was a, a, a hairy romp in the woods. That's what you do when you hit your 40s. Bunch right, Tim? That's right. You get you get weird Every furry chance costumes. You get. And... If you ain't living. But I can understand why they, they took a took a took just a shot at these animals because... Uh, they're very elusive, so you gotta you if you got you gotta strike with irons hot, you know, so to speak. I know you got your your knob in something, and I appreciate as as I uh, as a man, I respect you and I respect your abilities, but you have to die. I hope you understand. All right, let's go on to our next story. Jeez, woman assaulted boyfriend with frozen pork chop in Florida. Oh, Florida. A Florida woman has been arrested for allegedly assaulting her boyfriend with a frozen piece of meat. I hate that word. <clears throat> Moist meat? Allegedly. Oh. Allegedly. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I love I, the other words. Moist and meat. I have a feeling. <laughs> I love moist meat. <laughs> <laughs> Put those together, you get a power word. The police believe Jennifer Brazard, 48, attacked her boyfriend by throwing a frozen pork chop at him after an argument escalated. The argument reportedly took place around 10 p.m. on Friday, and around that time, Miss Brazard allegedly hurled the pork chop at her there boyfriend, hitting him right above the left eye. Is it Police pork said. chop? Pork chop? Is that the word you don't like? Allegedly. Oh, allegedly. <laughs> you you just, allegedly we don't just... like pork chop? <laughs> no, allegedly. Okay. I hate the word allegedly. Oh, Very suspect. suspect. Pork chop. <clears throat> Got it. The arrest report stated the man left the scene and that he suffered a half-inch laceration from the frozen pork chop attack. The police interviewed both Miss Brazard and her partner before ter- determining that the Brooksville woman was the perpetrator. The report also said they had been dating her boyfriend for about one year and that they had been living together at the time of the incident. Miss Brazard was booked into county jail and released on a $250 bond. The judge presiding her bond hearing ordered her to not contact her boyfriend. It is uncertain whether or not the pork chop was taken in for evidence. She faces a domestic battery charge. It is unclear whether she has yet been assigned a lawyer or has had a chance to enter a plea. You know, I think this is just, uh, she's returning the favor. I'm sure she's had pork in her face. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Uh... Do you think it caused a half inch laceration to her eyebrow, though? Possible. <laughs> if it was a moose, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's more of a bludgeoning. <laughs> that's contusions and bruising. The dumbest line in that whole thing, I think, was like, it is uncertain whether or not the pork chop has been taken into evidence. I guess. <laughs> Are I you kidding? I don't know if they were trying to make a joke or if it's for real. It's Florida. They don't know how to, they don't know comedy, they don't know jokes. <laughs> They have no ability to do that. It's not in their blood. <laughs> and that's where, like, Hulk Hogan's from. And, you know, if, if that state created that human being. <laughs> Bro, 
brother. There is no. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad. I don't know. I don't know. Right. Right. Brother. <laughs> brother. God. You know what they say. <laughs> Half inch. <laughs> ham laceration. Old daddy used to say. <laughs> it's just like just my, my father used to say. <laughs> yeah. So Hulk Hogan. Uh, how many of us in here have seen the sex tape? What? <laughs> no, no I hands don't. went up. I'm very proud of all of us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I just wanted that. to double check. Our friendship needs to know these kind of things. I, I want to see that mustache ride. <laughs> that's not. I mean, I got a VHS copy. It's off road. Some things don't need to be known. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Some things. I mean, some things were known, <laughs> brother. <laughs> Let's go into our next Anywho. story. Man hospitalized <laughs> after injecting own semen to treat back pain. Just <laughs> let that. Let that. Uh, Sink in? Let Let that sink in a little bit. Let that semen simmer. A new study published in the Irish Medical Journal recounts the case of a 33-year-old man who was hospitalized after repeatedly injecting himself with semen to relieve chronic back pain. They said this is the first reported case of semen injection for use as a medical treatment. I've seen it work on the movies. All you got to do is to shoot some semen inside yourself and you get superpowers. That's right. That's maybe what he thought. Maybe he getting some help. You know, he had some harmless back pain, so it says. <clears throat> some harmless back pain. That's what it said. Seemingly harmless uh, back pain. Seemingly. <laughs> seemingly. Seemingly, yes. Uh, the man's handmade remedy. <laughs> Let that sink in. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Oh, man. Was reportedly discovered when he showed up at a doctor's office complaining of severe back pain while examining a patient. <clears throat> the patient, a physician, noticed the man's right arm was swollen and inflamed. The explanation, the man... <laughs> more, more questions keep coming up than, than, than they have been answered. The patient disclosed that he had intravenously injected his own semen as an innovative method to treat back pain. He had devised this cure independent of any medical advice. The man reportedly said he had purchased hypodermic needle online and had been injecting himself once a month for the past 18 months. I accidentally got oh. semen in my own eye and it okay. burned and hurt, right. so I decided <laughs> I'd shoot it in my body. Before visiting the doctor, he said he hurt his lower back while lifting a heavy object and gave himself three doses according to the study. Three doses, stat. <laughs> <laughs> That's Take your three for man. the day. After that, you're done. you got to wait till tomorrow. Yeah, got to wait till tomorrow, man. I'm spent. Doctors treated the man with intravenous anti micro Microbial? It sounded like he just died. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Therapy. His back pain reportedly subsided and he discharged himself without having the infected area drained. Study concludes the warning that a medical experimentation is dangerous and is risky for untrained individuals to inject themselves with any substance not intended for intravenous use. If Doctor's it comes warning, out your penis, don't put it in intravenously. Don't put it in. <laughs> I can't remember where exactly what sub I saw it on, but more and more of my life is being taken up by Reddit. A post about, it was like this string of text messages um, where somebody, you know those people that think that their own bodily fluids are like the cures for things, kind of like this guy here? Um, Well, someone had taken their urine and was like, I'm going to wash out my eyes with it. And it was it was aged <laughs> urine, three days old. And oh, then they're 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 texting my. or they're it's either a text Perfection. or messaging like other people in whatever little community yeah. they're in, where they're like, Boy, I don't know why, but my eyes are kind of yellow and I'm getting like build up on the edges. <laughs> and so I washed it out again with more urine. And oh it's God. just it's I've got these floaties and I just don't know what's going on. And people are responding and you'd think people would be like, What the heck is wrong with you? Mm-hmm. But they're like, Yeah, I did that too. It just kind of <laughs> went away after a few days. And there's this whole string of just like, you know, talking about AIDS urine and you're washing your eyes out with this and that. Yeah, I did it and I got twenty twenty sight now. Exactly. <laughs> And this guy, I think, is part of that community where he's like, boy, my back hurts. And I'm like, you know what you can do? <laughs> you know what? And you're going to like this. <laughs> Hang on. You really are. All right, I got a good one. Okay. Machete-armed clown-masked robbers get beaten by scooter-wielding Texas grandma. Uh, a Texas grandmother and her husband fended off two alleged robbers wearing clown masks and armed with a machete. And they used a child scooter. The confrontation took place in Texas City. I, I didn't know that was a place. But Texas City. Welcome to Texas the, City, <laughs> Texas. In the early morning the- hours of February 1st, according to KTRK TV, as Aretha Cardinal and her husband Joseph Nelson were sitting outside their home in a parked truck 
I'm sitting here talking to my wife, and the next thing I know, when I look up, I see somebody running toward me with this white clown mask and a machete, Nelson told Houston's KTRK TV. Cardinal said the would-be robbers drove up in a vehicle, and both of them had clown masks and gloves. Rob me with a machete? A police report cited by the Star-Telegram recounted that one of the assailants, wearing a white mask, orange hair, and a big red nose, approached Nelson and threatened him with a machete, saying, you, you're going to give it up, or I'm going to cut you. Was he trying Nelson to told KTRK-TV he was shocked by the unfolding scene and couldn't believe what was happening. He reached his hand through the window and put it on my throat like this, Nelson recounted. <laughs> Sir, stop touching me. <laughs> and I love their quotes. They didn't paraphrase. It was like exactly the way they would have said it. You could picture it. And he's, he, he says... And I'm like, dude, you serious? You trying to rob me with a machete? <laughs> and instead, I'm a of hand- <laughs> <laughs> instead of handing over the money, the couple chose to resist. Nelson reportedly struggled with the assailant to take control of the machete and at the same time called out to his wife to find a weapon. I used the scooter. Cardinal got out of the truck, grabbed her granddaughter's scooter from the front yard, any weapon is good for me if I can get you off me and my husband, she told the station. That's what I'm going to do. And scooters, you ever hit one page. of those things, hit your ankles? That's debilitating. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's worse than a machete. It's more dangerous than a machete. Mm. Uh, the woman then started hitting the machete-wielding bandits with a child scooter. I used the scooter, she recounted. I broke it in half. She also struck <laughs> oh, the suspect's vehicle with the scooter, according to the Daily News, smashing the window. Nelson also managed to wrest the machete away from one of the suspects and set off in pursuit. Me and my husband held them down, you know, commenced to beating them until the laws came. The laws. The The laws? laws. (laughs) Literally what she said. Uh, That's what Cardinal told Fox 26 in Houston. It was really scary, but it was like it was either us or them, you know, and not us. You not going to steal no money. (laughs) We ain't got no money. (laughs) You ain't going to steal no money. Not now, not no never from me. (laughs) The couple's daughter called the police, and they arrested both suspects. Luis Jimenez, 32, and Jose Lugo, 35, have been charged with aggravated robbery and are being held in Galveston County Jail. $100,000 bond has been set for each of the suspects. Mm. The fact that they were already in a vehicle got rolled up on by people with a machete <laughs> and then ended up running them down and beating them <laughs> with a scooter. With a scooter. Broke it in that's, half. That's amazing. Yeah, well, that's what I would be, I would realize, that's like throwing a punch and someone catching it. Mm-hmm. Like, you immediately know that fight's going to go wrong. If you turn back <laughs> and you see an old lady ripping a scooter in half, yeah. you know this fight's about to go not in your favor. <laughs> so what was that? That was, we had Bigfoot sex. Um... <laughs> What was yours? Pork chop fight. <laughs> yeah. uh, then we had in the semen, yeah, in, the, right. semen in the semen in, in the in veins, the yeah. and grandma fighting. Man, that's a good round of stories right there. Mm-hmm. If that's your, not what you need your for your time. daily news dose, I don't know what you. I don't know what you need. I don't know you. I really don't. Write me. <laughs> I ain't got um, no money. I'm lonely. So let's go ahead and get into our first beer of the night. So this one is from Trinity Brewing Company, uh, Evoke Fermentations is their slogan, I guess. Um, They are out of Colorado. Um, I got their website pulled up here. I'll just they they have their about page. Um, I'll I'll go through a paragraph of it. Um, It is it's pretty interesting. Uh, It says that at Trinity Brewing, we not only brew the most artisanal beer in town, we also make huge efforts towards eco sensitivity. We custom-built our pub from nearly 100% recycled materials. A number of our beers are even produced in large wooden barrels, which previously housed wines or spirits. Whether reviving ancient traditions or coming up with, with completely new ideas, our beer will always be challenging for your palate. And then they go on to talk about sustainability and reducing their carbon impact and all that good stuff. Um, this one that we have here today is called the Mad Ear. And um, 
you can kind of see where they're they're talking about using barrels that were once used for the wine barrels, wine, or you know, you can you can taste a bit of that. Yeah, in the beer, um, it's pretty strong, eight point one percent, which I mean that's pretty impressive. I mean that's on the upper end. Um, they have a lot of information. I do like their their bottle is really well made. The label is really nice. They even talk about uh, the temperature, the preferred temperature that you uh, need to serve this beer at, and they said around forty five to fifty degrees. It's a vegan beer, it says. I guess all of theirs are. They say, our beers are consciously vegan, re-fermented in the bottle to high carbonation levels for lively aromatics and dry effervescence. Barley, oats, rye was used. Extended boil for the red color that it has. No spices were used in it. A cool free rise from 50 degrees with a blend of proprietary yeast. Pair with truffled foie gras. Rosemary lamb and another word that I can't say. Yeah. I mean, I don't Hmm. know. What do you guys think of it? It's definitely got, you can tell, you can taste the, the, well, I feel like you can taste that wine in there a little bit. Yeah, Yeah. you can. There's something else I can't identify in the beginning. It's almost in the aroma. I've had that before, but I can't. I think that's, I don't know if that's the pear. I get a lot of, maybe it is. Maybe it's the pear in the aroma. It's almost, um. At the front of it, it's real light mm-hmm. in a way. Almost, yes. It doesn't taste like a beer. When you poured it, did it? I didn't see. Did it have a no. head on it? Not really. No. No. Mm-mm. There was a little no head on it. It requires a hard pour, which I find interesting. Oh, so that might have been my error there. I didn't dump it. <laughs> oh, I didn't like a think barbarian. it would have required one though. It's but got yeah. a um, almost a carbonated feel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know if I was crazy, but yeah. No, it definitely has a carbonated feel. So I like that. I was, I'd say if I was to describe this one word, it'd be funky. It is yeah. a funky beer. Um, and, and again, yeah, it's I hard to like, place where it fits. Yeah. It's not this a beer, is, and it's not a wine cooler. This is our second episode in, uh, that, that we've had a beer that we almost don't feel like is a beer. You know, that one is just mm-hmm. kind of odd. It almost, I would again kind of think about it as being almost a cider it does in flavor it's, and it's, feel. it's kind of a class of its own yeah. with the mouth feel you know? what well, is a a lambic um which focuses according to wikipedia which focuses more on a cidery and wine taste which mm. is exactly that's what explain what we, the cider has wine yeah. taste big yeah. thing um <laughs> <laughs> <The what? laughs> it's has, funny. has more of a cider and wine taste well, that would explain the cider and wine taste. <laughs> That's what it focuses on. That's funny. Um, I mean, so, they nailed it. <laughs> yeah, no, they you did. <laughs> um, Lambics are unique. Sure They're Belgian-based. Um, but yeah, I don't think we've ever had one mm-hmm. on the show as of yet. But uh, Not know, that. Funky no. is a good word to describe it. And I don't really get too much in the aroma aspect of it i get like a little bit of pear but that's really about it i don't really get much else on the nose no it's not strong and it's aroma yeah, funky is the best word i think to describe that it's not I, bad though it's not bad funky it's just there are uh, things i like about it as it kind of like cycles through like you know the, yeah. the different the, the front end back end, the different flavors it's like parts of it i like and then it gets to like the aftertaste or something and, and yeah. i'm having a hard time with it this is interesting, though, about Lambing. It says, it is usually a blend of at least two different beers. Many producers are blenders who buy beer from other brewers and blend them together hmm. to create the desired result. Well, so hmm. that could be a... Well, how do you pronounce the name of it again? Lambic. 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 <laughs> One more time. Yes. Everybody all together now. Lambic. Lambic. <laughs> Foie gras. Foie gras. Foie gras. All right, let's get into our next round of stories. This one, once again, I'm just finding a ton of good ones from worldnewsdailyreport.com. I'm starting to believe that all these are fake because as I'm going through and reading them, some of these headlines. Uh, actually, let me let me read some of these headlines real quick just so you can get an idea. A couple hospitalized after a man gets head stuck in wife's vagina. <laughs> Morgan employee cremated by mistake while taking a nap. Babysitter transported to hospital after inserting a baby into her, her vagina. Just a lot of uh, real... A lot of vagina Yeah, a lot of vagina stories. stories. But anyways, this one's about penises. <laughs> FBI seizes over 3,000 penises during a raid at Morgan employee's home. 
FBI agents made an astonishing discovery this morning while executing a search warrant at the residence of a Houston mortician. 3,178 embalmed human penises. The Federal Bureau of Investigation inspected f- suspected 54-year-old Dave Murray, an employee of Harris County Morgue, of being implicated in an organ trafficking network. Investigating several reports of missing organs and body parts, dozens of agents raided his residence this morning, hoping to find evidence of his involvement in the crimes. What they found on the site was a lot more disturbing than what they expected, as the FBI spokesman Andy Ramirez described the scene in an interview with WNTV4. There were shelves everywhere filled with hundreds of glass jars, (laughs) each one of them containing a floating penis and formalin. According to Agent Ramirez, the accused rapidly confessed to everything as soon as he was arrested. He explained in great detail how he had been cutting off dead men's genital organs and collecting them for more than 10 years. It took the FBI more than seven hours to gather all the organs and other pieces of evidence that were found on site. That'd be a great episode of Hoarders. Yeah. (laughs) I can't get rid of them. I need my penises. A total of 53 criminal charges have already been filed against Mr. Murray. And hundreds more could be filed over the next few days. An anonymous mm-hmm. FBI source told WNTV4 that the number of charges could reach over 3,000. They're great with grilled onions. <laughs> great with, yeah. Oh, well, if you pickle them just right. <laughs> <laughs> that's usually the key. It's all about how it's preserved. I haven't ever preserved anything myself, but I hear that's the key. You know, you make sure it's sealed properly, make sure it's preserved. And then, you know, at any point in time, you could eat one. Do you think you can make like some kombucha out of it? Just yeah. leave it sit and kombucha. Add some. That's, that's you do. You just let it ferment. Yeah. And well, oh man, can you imagine that fermented penis? Yeah, that would sell by the <laughs> truckload. People in here injecting <laughs> semen into themselves. You tell them that there's some penis related drink out there. They're gonna go nuts over it. I'm thinking of a good hummus. Ooh. You know, yeah. Some blend it up in there. You drizzle some red pepper on top. And all mm. that. Red pepper flakes yeah. all over it. Down there. Maybe a nice foie gras. Mm. It's like garlic. <laughs> I'm getting hints of garlic. It doesn't say it on the container, but... I'm getting a hint of uh, <laughs> salt. A lot, a lot of, of salt. salt. <laughs> what is this? Uh, this tastes like... Um... Penis. Penis. <laughs> That's exactly what it tastes like. All right, let's go on to our next story. Jared, what do you got? A Florida politician allegedly made a habit of licking men's faces. She has now resigned. It was supposed to be a fun, lighthearted alternative to typical government meetings and one befitting a laid-back beach town. The city commission of Madeira Beach, Florida, a coastal community of nearly 4,500 situated on a barrier island facing the Gulf of Mexico. They had decided to hold a special outdoor meeting during the King of the Beach fishing tournament in November 2012. The main order of business, honoring a sister city in the Bahamas. But things quickly got out of hand at the meeting. According to a report from the Florida Commission on Ethics, by her own admission, Nancy Oakley, a city commissioner in Madeira (laughs) Beach... There's a made-up thing. <laughs> That's the most ridiculous thing. I know thing a lot of our stories, there's a chance of them not being true, but I can tell you right up, an ethics commission in Florida does not exist. <laughs> so, by her own admission, Nancy Oakley said she had done some drinking at the fishing competition. She spotted Shane Crawford, the city manager at the time, and Cheryl McGrady, his executive assistant. I'm going to lick his face. <laughs> I had him in my sights. I know, that's like the thing. It's just the crowd separating and him being there, just there. And it's just like, I, and I'm going to lick it. I'm going to lick it real good. The two would later marry, but were in relationships oh. with other people at the time. <laughs> Oakley suspected them of having an affair. So uh, he. Uh, well, so Shane face Crawford. Licking other things. So I guess Shane Crawford marries Cheryl McGrady, not Oakley here. Uh, using expletives, she demanded McGrady, who was supposed to be acting as deputy city clerk and taking the minutes, be removed. Then after the otherwise low-key meeting concluded, Oakley walked up to Crawford again. She allegedly licked his neck and the side of his face, slowly working her way up from his Adam's apple and groped him by grabbing at his crotch and butt. <laughs> <laughs> what I don't understand is he just sat there. I mean, if, 
slowly worked your way up. <laughs> I mean, there's a choice in that. You can easily back out of a uh, crotch grab. <laughs> but did he want to? Yeah, did he, he was waiting. <laughs> Could this lead to something else? <laughs> McGrady. I think she's into me. <laughs> I don't know. It's just a hunch. McGrady, who had been standing there the entire time, told Oakley that her behavior was inappropriate. No. Well, uh, I find this inappropriate. If I wasn't so erect right now, I'd say that you shouldn't be doing this, but continue. According to the report, Oakley threw a punch at the woman, but missed. It wasn't an isolated incident. Crawford told Bay News 9 last month, Oakley had a habit of licking men that either she was attracted to or thought she had authority over. He wrote in a 2017 complaint to the ethics board that does not exist that Oakley had made unwanted advances toward the other city staff too and that they were not interested in enduring that type of treatment ever again. Oakley resigned from her position on the Madeira Beach City Commission on Tuesday a week after the state ethics panel announced Crawford's complaint had been upheld in a unanimous vote. Though the face-looking episode allegedly <laughs> took place in 2012, it took another five years to Crawford to file a complaint. Five years? <laughs> five. I don't like it, but I'll let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> For five years. All right, I'm married now. I don't like it anymore. <laughs> after Oakley decided to seek office in 2017, Crawford <clears throat> filed an official complaint. She won the race, and in her first meeting back, suggested McGrady should be fired. A month after that, she was one of three commissioners who voted to suspend him for reasons that were not fully explained. The investigation into Oakley's misconduct led to a very public airing of Madeira's Beach dirty laundry. During one hearing, Oakley's attorney began shouting at McGrady and insisting she had been having an affair with Crawford in 2012, when the two were married to different people. McGrady insisted it was untrue. Meanwhile, numerous friends of Oakley were called to the stand and subjected to extensive questioning about her drinking and whether she had ever been known to lick people's faces. <laughs> Where was the guy that was licking the uh, uh, licking the doorbell? doorbell. <laughs> yeah, that was, was that was that Florida. Uh, that was. I don't uh, know. I don't think so. I mean, we can go with Florida. I mean, uh, might I, as well. I, I I yeah. Actually, I think it was Florida. It was Florida. <laughs> I'll have to go back and look, but I think it was. Boy, they like licking things out yeah. there. A lot of good, a lot of good looking there. A lot of good looking action. <laughs> a lot of good looking. Tim, good take us looking. away to the next story. Let's go to New Orleans. <laughs> Man accused of bomb threat insists he just had to poop really bad. <laughs> Another bomb threat. Just go, man. Uh, police said that suspect told employees at Willie's Chicken Shack, "Y'all about to get closed right now because I'm going to get a bomb and blow this place up." You're going to blow it up. Blow it up. It's a direct You're in New quote. Orleans. Just go out in the street. <laughs> like, it's fine. Just blend uh, in with the rats. <laughs> There's big old rats down big there. Old, big old rats, man. As the story goes, it says, as jokes go, this one was really crappy. But um, you, <laughs> you might even say it bombed. Uh, wow, that's poor writing. Uh, <laughs> New Orleans man accused of threatening to blow up a local restaurant last Tuesday told police the big misunderstanding he was referring to a bowel movement. Uh, I'm about to blow <laughs> this place up. If I don't get my chicken. Uh, according to the arrest warrant, uh, 30-year-old Arthur Posey walked into Willie's Chicken Shack and asked the employee what time the restaurant closed. When the employee told Posey she didn't know, he allegedly replied, y'all about to close up right now because I'm going to get a bomb blow this place up. <laughs> That's what I would have said. Um, restaurant employees told police that Posey was very angry during the discussion. He later told police that he was referring to the restroom and wasn't making any real threats. The employee also said he never mentioned the bathroom when he made his alleged threat. Or is that word alleged? Alleged. My that, alleged. <laughs> that you alleged. don't like. Uh, Posey faces two counts of communicating false information from planned arson. Hmm. That's not false information. He had a bomb to drop. That's right. There you go. <clears throat> Tell me your funny story. <laughs> I got one. Alleged. <laughs> no, here we go. There it is. Fails right to open it. fast food cash <laughs> register, so he just steals fried chicken instead. Uh, New or, Orleans. Oh. Oh, hey. Oh, yeah. Same guy. Yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. Close this place down. I'm going to drop a bomb and steal some chicken. <laughs> Police say a man entered a fast food restaurant and tried to swipe some cash, but couldn't open the register. 
So he made off with some fried chicken instead. <laughs> uh, leaving up the end. His finger looking good. <laughs> Nola.com <laughs> reports the man entered the Popeyes in eastern New Orleans <laughs> on Monday morning and we tried to steal money. <laughs> <laughs> so he, yeah, entered a Popeyes in eastern New Orleans on Monday morning, tried to steal money from the register. The police say the register wouldn't budge, probably because it was locked. So he grabbed some fried chicken and fled. Police arrested 27-year-old Philip Lee a short time later in the area. He faces charge of simple robbery and simple battery. Magistrate chicken. Judge Bridget <laughs> Collins set his bond at $13,500. It was also unknown if he's represented by an attorney who could comment on the case. I doubt it. I doubt he's represented by an attorney. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something tells me. Yep, that... Yeah, I don't think he's a, he's being represented. <laughs> he looks uh, striking like the the man that uh, is in my story. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? I think that's his brother. Huh? <laughs> I'm gonna blow this place up. I just say the Popeyes. Where are you at oh, right now? God, get that chicken. Get something. <laughs> got spicy. Now I'm gonna drop a bomb. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get into our last beer of the night. So our last beer of the episode is made by Colorado Native Brewing Company. Um, this one is simply just called the Amber Lager. Um, let's see, the bottle, on the bottle, it's got a nice description. Let's see if I can see it in this lighting. Uh, Colorado Native is the only lager brewed with 100% Colorado ingredients. Barley grown in the San Luis Valley, Colorado grown hops, Rocky Mountain water, and the oldest variety of brewing yeast in the state. The majority of the barley and hops used to brew other Colorado beers comes from out of state. By using only Colorado-grown barley and hops, we are supporting the Colorado agriculture community. We do not ship brewing ingredients into the state. Our bottles are made in Wheat Ridge. Our cans are made in Golden. Are are made in Golden. I guess that's that's a place Colorado Golden. And we do not sell our beer outside of the state. All of this adds up to a smaller carbon footprint and a great tasting all Colorado beer. A um, little bit on the beer. There's not, not a whole lot of information on it. I mean, I guess it, it's it's just an amber lager, about 5.5%. Um, hops, uh, Cascade and Chinook. Um, Moravian, two-row pale and car- caramel malts are used. And then, of course, their yeast, which is native, uh, native house lager yeast. I mean, it's it's okay. I, there's not really much of a like a real flavor profile. I guess there's just to me tastes like a regular beer. Yeah, oh. I'm I'm not getting anything from that. I mean, I like I'm an amber, lie. yeah, and I like a lager, <clears throat> but you put them together, uh, I'm not feeling it. Um, there is, I wish I had more to say about this. Yeah. Have you tried that yet? Uh, I did. It's, it's, again, there's an initial kind of, how do I put it? Um, there's an initial hoppiness at the front and then it just dies. Yeah. There's not like, there's really nothing. I mean, I, I, I hate can't. it cause you know, I'd like to have more to say, but. There is not much to say about that one. Well, it talks about yeah. the the barley taste, and it uh, that is the main. It's a nutty flavor at the very yeah. beginning, but at the end, like like middle to the end, is all hops related. And that's all I'm tasting. That's um, it. And it dissipates as, as very an aftertaste quickly. is a just a bit of a generic hoppy, yeah, yeah, hoppy it, flavor. It doesn't have the characteristics of a of either one. Of a good amp. Well, that not only that, but a good amber. Yeah. Good amber is supposed to have that taste all the way through. <clears throat> it just has a, a different mouthfeel to it. Uh, mouthfeel. It's like a fuller body, but I think that's where the lager comes into play. Yeah, I, I don't like the uh, infusion, so to speak. 
I mean, I, 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 don't, I, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I don't hate it, but I don't like it either. either. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't order it at a restaurant or anything no, like that. You know, would especially not. for the prices that a typical restaurant would charge for. I wouldn't beer. spend money on that. No. No, if I want an amber, I want it to be an ale. Mm-hmm. It's, it's yeah. just much different. It's just like a typical average beer with just kind of blah taste. It is blah. It, it tastes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nothing exciting about it at all. I mean, what would you all rate it out of five? So, I mean, 0. 0.5. I, think. <laughs> I yeah. would give it, oh, man, a, or a one. One. Yeah I'd, have, yeah, I'd have to give it a one. I'd do it two. Two? Yeah. So one point two five. One point two five. There you go. So, yeah. Sorry. I feel uh, bad about it, mean, at the same time. I mean, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, as I've noticed on their website, as you go through their list, uh, their list of beers, everything's very, okay, so like you got Amber Lager, then there's Golden Lager, IPL, Pilsner, Imperial Porter, Saison. These are literally the names of their beers. Hmm. It's like as generic <laughs> Yeah. As they can get, oh, just yeah. and about as unidentifiable. What, what flavor is this beer? Beer flavor. <laughs> <laughs> like Kroger used to put one out. It was called uh, Cost Cutter Beer. Yeah, never tried it, but probably that. Don't they? <laughs> <laughs> just probably that. Yeah, they said they don't ship it out of state. <laughs> well, not with that label on it. They don't. <laughs> no, no, not with that taste. You're exactly. not going to find many customers outside of Colorado are going to drink it. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah. Hate to be negative, but yeah. uh, it is what it is. Better luck next time, my friends. Who's going to finish way it? To end the show, you're going to finish it, Jared. You seem sad about that. Well, We're all depressed. It, I just about don't, this beer. Well, I just don't understand. It's a light. It's basically light trying to appear as a heavier tasting. Like if there's anything so positive st- to say about it, I like the color. Yeah, that's yeah, about that's nice it. Oh, yeah, it's a nice color. I mean, I think we said that even when we reported it. It's like, right. boy, that's a good that's color. That's a good color. Yeah. And then I... all the compliments ended there. <laughs> it all died and right that's there. As, that's <laughs> as far as we went. <laughs> I guess that wraps up another episode of Laughs and Drafts. As always, like I say at the end of every episode, you can find us on iTunes. Please go there, subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, we're also on Spotify as well. Mm-hmm. Facebook, you can find us there, Laughs and Drafts. We are on Twitter at Laughs in Drafts. You can also and find us uh, at where I cut Jared off at uh, patreon.com slash Laughs and Drafts. Go uh, ahead, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can also find us on Instagram at Laughs in Drafts Pod. And you can, back to me, it's me, this is Ethan. Uh, <laughs> you can find us on Reddit now at Laughs and Drafts. Laughs and Drafts. For those of you who don't know the name of our podcast, that's what it's called. <laughs> We're trying to get our name in as many times as they got Colorado into the description of that beer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess it's uh, uh, another week until I have to see your all's pretty faces again. So that means it's a week of it's a break. Uh, I always forget how horrible it is to see you all in person. <laughs> <laughs>